Okay, this is the November 2017 grade 11 question on acids and bases. It says two reactions of sulfuric acid are shown in the diagram below. So here's my sulfuric acid. The first reaction reacts it with sodium hydroxide and the second reaction reacts it with water. So it first says define a lowery Bronsted base. Remember there's this in the Arrhenius theory. This is the one if you are a base. A base is a proton acceptor. Remember that a proton is just a little H+. Plus, okay, this one here, H+, plus, this is what we call a proton because it's a, a hydrogen atom that's missing its electron. Now it says write a balanced equation for reaction 1. So if we look at reaction 1, we've got sulfuric acid, which is an acid, plus sodium hydroxide, which is a base. And if you know your general reactions, you know an acid and a base goes to a salt and water. So there's my water, easy to write. What is the salt going to be? Well, you have to look at what cations and anions you have. The cation is the sodium cation, and the anion is the sulfate anion. And if you know your uh, polyatomic ions, you know that the sulfate ion has a charge of minus 2, and the sodium only has a charge of plus 1 because it only has one electron to lose. So this one has to be in a 2SO4 to be neutral. So I'm just going to rub out the charges, but I use the charges to figure out what is my molecular formula for the salt sodium sulfate. And so it's two sodiums per one sulfate anion. So if we have a look now, we have two sodiums on the right. We need two sodiums on the left. But by putting two sodiums on the left with a sodium hydroxide, we have now increased the number of hydrogen and oxygen, so we will end up with two water. So if you count now, one, two hydrogens, three, four hydrogens in the sodium hydroxide, and on the right-hand side, we've got four hydrogens, two oxygens that came from the sodium hydroxide, the sulfate ion went across uh, unchanged, and the two sodium ions went across unchanged. So we are now balanced. Now it says write down the name of the salt represented by X, that is sodium sulfate, and you can write it with the F or with the pH according to IUPAC naming. You should actually write it with the F, but they will accept with the S-U-L-P-H-A-T-E. Now it says write down the formula of amphalite A. Here is amphalite A. So amphalite is something that can act as either an acid or a base. And often we talk about water being an amphalite, but that's not what we're looking for. So if we have a look at this reaction, we had sulfuric acid plus water. And then they said we are going to end up with amphalite A and a hydronium ion. So all you have to do is atoms on the left, atoms on the right. If I take one hydrogen off and I bond it to the water over there in a date of covalent bond, I will end up with my H3O plus over there. So all I have to do is I have to take my H2SO4 and I have to remove a hydrogen and I'm left with HSO4 minus. Charges on the left add up to zero, charges on the right add up to zero. So this is the product of the first ionization of sulfuric acid. With the second ionization, you'll produce another hydronium ion. But that is the balanced equation for what's going on in reaction two. But what are they looking for? They are looking for the amphalite, this one here, which is HSO4 minus. Okay. Now it says write down the formulae of two conjugate acid base pairs in reaction two. So if we want a conjugate acid base pair, okay, I'm going to write it over here because I need that space for the next part. If you want the formulae for a conjugate acid base pair, you need two things that differ by a proton, an H+. So the one pair is easy. It's the water and its partner. If we add an H plus to water, its partner is the H3O minus. So the other thing we are left with there, what else donated a proton? This H2SO4 donated a proton. And so what is we must only make one proton difference between these two. So the one proton difference gives me my little amphalite HSO4 minus. 
So you can see with the water, we added a proton. With the sulfuric acid, we removed a proton. But these are both conjugate acid-base pairs because they differ from each other by a proton. Now it says to you, a solution of sodium hydroxide is prepared by dissolving 6 grams of solid sodium hydroxide in 500 cubic centimeters of water. This solution reacts completely with 10 grams of impure ammonium chloride according to the equation below. So in every chemistry reaction that you do the calculations for, you are always given something to work out. And the first part is always easy. Can you see this part is for four marks? It says calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. So concentration, we can either use C equals N over V for a formula, or we can use C equals M over MV. So if we use C equals M over MV, that is mass over molar mass, we need to know what is the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. And if you go to your periodic table, Sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is 1. So this all adds up to 40, and it's 40 grams per mole. So we come back over here. We need to check here. It said to you we were in 500 cubic centimeters, which is 500 times 10 to the negative 3 cubic decimeters, or if you prefer, you can say 0,5 cubic decimeters. Either way, centimeters to cubic decimeters divide by a thousand. So what mass did we have in the question? Six grams, that's the small m. The big m is the molar mass, which is 40, and the volume is a half a cubic decimeter. So if we work all of this out in our calculator, we should end up with 0, 0,3, and my unit is moles per cubic decimeter. So that was easy for four marks. Now it says to you, and you've got to watch out here, it says calculate the percentage impurities. Usually it says calculate the percentage purities in something. So we know that if we want to calculate percentage purity, it is equal to the mass of the pure over the mass of the impure. Okay. Times... 100. So then if we get a percentage purity, the percentage impurity will be 100% because that's the whole sample minus the percentage purity because the purities plus the impurities must add up to 100% if you think about it. Purity plus impurity is what's making up the whole sample which will be 100%. So if we can find the percentage purity, we can end up finding the percentage impurity simply by subtracting from 100. So to go about this, it says to you this solution reacts completely with the impure ammonium chloride. So the only thing it can be reacting with in this 10 grams is the pure ammonium chloride. The rest, the impurities won't react. So the only thing we can find the moles for, because you must always find the moles before you start, is the 6 grams of sodium hydroxide. So what we want to do is we want to say how many moles of sodium hydroxide did we have to react with. And so that's mass over molar mass. So this is 6 over, remember we calculated the molar mass to be 40. So 6 over 40 is 0,15 moles. So we had 0,15 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now we go to the balanced equation and we look at our mole ratios. One mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of ammonium chloride. So if I only had 0,15 moles of sodium hydroxide, the ratio is 1 to 1, I will only end up with 0,15 moles of ammonium chloride reacting with it. So once I know that, I want to turn these moles of ammonium chloride into a mass because we want to make a mass-mass calculation, mass of pure over mass of impure. So what is my molar mass for ammonium chloride? It's going to be the mass of nitrogen from the periodic table, 14 plus 4 hydrogens. Hydrogen is 1, so 4 times 1 is 4 plus chlorine, which is 35 and a half. And
and this adds up to 53 and a half, if I'm not mistaken, grams per mole. So what we want to do now is we know that my sodium hydroxide reacted with the ammonium chloride in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I know that there was 0 0.15 moles of ammonium chloride reacted, and I want to know how much that weighs. So the mass of ammonium chloride is going to be the number of moles times the molar mass. So I had 0 0.15 moles from my mole ratio times 53 and a half. And if you put that in your calculator, you get 8,025 grams. Okay, so now we want to come to our percentage purity. So it's the mass of the pure, what we reacted from the balanced equation, 8,025. Please don't round. Please only round in your final answer. And there was 10 grams in the whole sample, and this works out to be 80,25%. But now this is the percentage purity. So if we want the percentage impurity, we have to say 100% is the full sample. Purity plus impurity equals 100%. So if we say 100% minus 80,25%, all we are left with is 19,75% impurity. Because if you think about it in a little box, this will be the pure things, and then everything else will be the impurities, and they can't react. Only the pure things can react, but if we add them all together, impure plus pure equals 100%.